Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I personally use the metro a lot. In fact, I use it to come and go from school, so I'm quite reliant on public transport. And in all my travels, there's one thing that I've always noticed on public transport. Have you ever noticed this metal path that runs in all the metro stations? So this path is actually a tactile path for the blind. Um, tactile, by definition, means it's connected to or um, perceived by the sense of touch. So this tactile path guides the blind to all the major points of interest in a metro station, like you know where they can buy a null card, where the uh, carriage for the disabled people is in the metro, washrooms, things like that. So all kinds of public transport, buses included, are quite accessible by people with disabilities. Now, I use the metro a lot, but to get from home to school, or school to home, one way, takes around 90 minutes traveling. Now, that's a lot of time, and I am a student of the IB. I don't actually have time. So I have to spend every passing minute working. So I typically spend these 90 minutes in the metro working on something. So one of these days, as I was sitting in the metro, with the thought of this tactile path in my mind, it struck me that what would a blind person do if he was in my position? How would he work? So I'm sitting there staring at my essay. I'm thinking, how would a blind person read what I'm reading? How would he type? And well, all they really have is Braille, if you think about it. And that's how they read, or from books. So it's a pattern of raised dots. But there aren't actually those many books in Braille. So that, uh, most of the information that we see these days are from either websites or uh, digital formats. But blind people can't see this. So to cater to the individual need of a blind person, they probably need a printer for themselves, right? Because they need to print what they need to see. Now, a child called Shubham Banerjee recently made a printer. He's a 13-year-old kid who's made a printer from Lego parts. And his estimated sale price is around $350. Now, this is, what you see on screen right here is the first version of a prototype model called Brago. And he's working on a second model now, which prints on actual A4 sheets and could potentially in the future use uh, batteries to be powered, so it should be portable. And he's actually been funded, backed by Intel. So that's quite a big thing. Now, other, mar other printers on the market as of now are not very cheap. So you see this one here is one of the most expensive printers on the market. It costs around $4,000, while this one is around $2,000. And most printers range in between this. The one you see for $299, well, it, it, it prints in Braille, but it's not very fast and it's not very efficient. So most of the usable Braille printers are in the price range of $2,000 to $4,000, which is not very affordable. And they print around 60 characters per second. But how cost effective is this system? How, if, how efficient is Braille as a system anyways? So according to a company called Brailler, who's been making Braille printers for about 43 years now, they, they say that when Braille is printed, it's typically shortened in, by a system called grades. Now, leaving the intricacies of this system aside, leaving the intricacies of the system aside, it still um, equates to around three, uh, two to three pages of Braille for one page of real printed text. And, well, that's not very helpful, is it? Because like, f think about us. How do we read most? We read digital formats. So I, I typically read on a laptop or on a phone or e-readers. How many of you use e-readers? Anyone? So e-readers are becoming a very popular concept. And, well, I started wondering, what e-readers do blind people use? Are there any e-readers for them on the market so far? And these are the three main kinds of e-readers that I found online. So this one here is an application which you find on iOS and Android, some of the most popular phones, phone operating systems that are, uh, which has around 75,000 audiobooks. Now, audiobooks are a good system, but they're not quite the same as reading. And paper as it is, it's, it's a dying form of communication anyways for us, for the people who are not visually impaired. 
So I wonder, why are the visually impaired still using the system? This really, like, it seemed really like a nice idea, and you'd think it helped people. But unfortunately, it is just a concept. Now, it's called anagraphs. Uh, it's a concept that started in about 2011, but by 2013, it failed. Uh, with a 1.2 million pound capital, they still couldn't make it in time because they eventually ran out of funds. Now, um, this system was supposed to work by heating paraffin wax to make it raise above and create the dots needed for Braille, but it didn't actually get enough commercial funding or enough backing to continue as a project. And as of 2014 in May, they still don't have anything after which there's been no mention of this project anywhere. So essentially, the only alternative for Braille people are printers like these. They're quite, this is the best alternative, but they're quite bulky and they're designed to be used on a table. So these printers are typically designed to only show a single line of characters. Well, there are very few exceptions, but most of them show a single line of characters. And they're quite bulky, as I said. So think you're, re think, think you're reading a book. They show only 18 characters per line. So I've taken an excerpt from a book called The Scorpio Illusion. This is how a blind person would interpret it. That's the first line he'd read. And then it would take time for the line to change. Then he'd read that. And then it would take some time for the line to change. And then he'd read that. And you can see the words don't even finish as a whole. So you can see that line by line, they're reading only bits and pieces. So the words aren't flowing into each other. It's, it's quite unconnected. So it's difficult to actually interpret it. And the book, which is around 150 pages long and 14,000 lines, with this printer, it would take around 60,000 lines to actually get the entire book across. So we see that this printer is expensive, and well, it's not very efficient. So I have made my own idea, a proposed solution to this issue. I call it Braille. So it's a concept for a Braille e-reader. So I've designed this based on something called a pin toy. It was created in 1976 by Ward Fleming, and it was initially used to make animated films at the time, an excerpt of which you can see here. Uh, that's a 1976 animated film by Jacques Drossian called Mindscape. Um, but pin toys, in fact, it's used more like a toy nowadays. So if you see that image there, uh, it's like a lot, lots of metal pins under which you can put any 3D image and raise the metal pins so it looks like another 3D image is formed out of metal. So along with the pin toy, I've also used electronic muscles. Now electronic muscles, this is one kind of them, but typically if a charge is applied across them, they either expand a lot or contract a lot, and some of them are even piezoelectric. Now piezoelectric means if you apply pressure on them, they give an electric charge back. So these can be used both ways. If you apply a charge on them, they expand or contract, or if you apply pressure on them, they give an electric signal back. So my proposed idea, my proposed design, is having a pin toy like that, and on each spindle or each pin, at the top, the green bit that you see could be a ring of an electronic muscle. And on top of each pin toy, you, uh, each layer, you have a secondary layer. So when any pin from this is pushed up, um, it will push a respective pin up if, the, if uh, an electric charge is put across the artificial muscle. If there is no electric charge pushed through the muscle, this will get pushed up, and this will just fall right into it, so they won't get pushed up. So using a coordinate system, uh, and a, a digital coordinate system, you could close the artificial muscles on the respective pins, and the respective pins would be pushed up. So all you need to do is send a signal to the pins that you need pushed up, and push the entire thing up. Just put it on the floor, and the pins that need to be pushed up will be pushed up. And you will essentially have Braille. And you can change that very fast. Now, according to this, you can have up to 64 characters per page, which is much better than current systems. It's 
almost as close to that of a book. And it is really important for people who have visual impairments. Now, why I think this would work is because this product is quite cheap to produce because the, main, the most expensive piece in this would probably be the electronic muscles, which would cost around $15 stops. It's quite simple. It's energy efficient. You can run this thing for about two days on a button-sized battery, not including, of course, the uh, energies that's taken for calculating, like any printed circuit boards or anything. That's not counted. But just uh, making the uh, needles go up. Because you're not actually using any energy to push the needles up. You're just using gravity for that. You put your device on a floor, and the respective needles come up. It's portable. It's about as big as an iPad currently. And there's a huge gap in the market that needs to be fulfilled. So there are around 285 million visually impaired people, 39 million of whom are completely blind. The rest have above 90% visual impairment. So they're not yet properly integrated into society. They don't have the means of accessing information like we do. They rely primarily on paper-based communication. So in this modern day and age where we have moved on to dynamic screens, I think it's, more, it's time that they do it also. Now, spreading awareness is step one. And I would encourage all of you to spread awareness by going to this web page. But step one isn't enough. We, we need to move past that. Not only be inspired by change, but act to change. We need to inspire others to take the next step. Taking the next step is important for us as a species. And I hope that you, you take this seriously, because it's not just important for us as a species, it's also important for these 285 million people who require a system like this so that they can be integrated into society properly, so that they can have access to the information that they need to have access to. I hope that this concept does become a reality, because sometimes that's what dreams need to be. Thank you.